Hello, my name is Ekaterina Smirnova and I'm welcoming you to my studio. My studio is in East Harlem and you can see my space is pretty crazy. It has all of these industrial features, which I like a lot because this way I can um, paint as much as I want and don't worry about destroying the walls and make them dirty. And today I'd like to show you how to, how do I work on my paintings. And uh, I'm so sorry for late start because I had technical difficulties, but now I know how to start the video. So, and I'd like to actually say hello to my husband who <laughs> been uh, helping me to set up this video. So it's all working, thumbs up. So in this studio today, I have two pieces that I have completed. Uh, the project is called 67P, and it's all about the comet on which we have landed a spacecraft in November of last year. The comet is called 67P, Chirim of Gerasimenko, by the people who have uh, found this comet. And uh, I've been working on it um, for about 12 months, and so far I have few paintings and I'm working on sculptures. And in this studio, I have two paintings that I've completed last week and I'm gonna show you. And this is one painting. And in this work, I'm studying the vapor of the comet. When comet is passing by the sun, the uh, ice of the, uh, the water in the shape of ice starting to melt and evaporate which is forming the comet's tail. That's what you actually see when you see the comet with long tail. So in this work, uh, you can um, notice that all of this white area is actually a water vapor from the comet. And on the very top over here, you can see some of the uh, part of the comet as well. This painting is completed on, on the uh, paper. I always work on paper with water media. I can even show you. The paper is very rough and it's 156 pound paper which I am pinning onto the wall over here and it's a brick wall, it's a very tough one to work with but anyway, yes, it's connected on the top with the uh, clips and the paint that I'm using is a water-based paint uh, it, you could say it is watercolor, but it is a hand-mixed watercolor, and I'm uh, using pigments to mix in the colors that I want, and a lot of splashes. The way that I paint my work is very often done with constantly heating uh, with paint the paper, so it creates this sort of splashy look, which, which is excellent, in my opinion, for the vapor study. And over here, I can show you another painting that I have completed last year. This is another piece of the comet, and uh, that particular feature of the comet is called um, Claudia Alexander Gate, and it's named by the uh, scientist American scientist, astronaut, uh, who has unfortunately passed away just recently this year. And I've decided to paint this work. So it's also a very interesting form to look at in between all these two formations that I have captured here. I can show you closer. So over here you can see actually whatever the whitest part is the whiteness of the paper. And that's why I would say working with watercolor is one of the hardest mediums because you need to save that whiteness until the very end. Where with oil, you can always paint over. But the most attractive part to me is to actually preserve these areas of uh, paper. The rest is painted with the same uh, water media that I am uh, mixing myself. You can see a lot of splashing over here and on the bottom part again you can see the vapor all of the paintings of the series have vapor uh, as a part of part of the artwork as well this piece is um, quite large it's 
70 inches tall and 52 inches wide comes from the rolls and this paper comes from rolls of it and uh, quite large pieces so this is the largest watercolor paper i can find on the market at the moment and today i am going to show you how do i uh, start a painting from beginning and you will see me working on it for those few minutes tomorrow i will continue so you can continue on watching and see the painting in the progress this is the paper i have already pinned it on the wall you can see it's quite large from all the way from the ceiling till almost the floor but i'm going to be only working on the part that is about the same size as the painting next to it 70 inches tall and before uh, i started the video i can show you that i did some of the drawings I don't like doing much of the drawings and don't illustrate my pieces. So I only put a few of the lines, guide lines that I'm going to be following. And over here, I did some of the, uh, all this uh, um, drawn on areas symbolize that this is going to be the darkest area. And that's it. Really, now I'm really ready to start the piece. I'll show you the reference that I chose for this uh, painting. Over here, on the, if you can see it, oh, you can see it slightly. I use uh, iPad, I don't like uh, printing out much, so that's the shape of the comet over here and those areas that you saw I made them darker on the drawings these are the darkest areas and of course all of this and over here it's uh, you cannot see it on this video but you can notice uh, there's a light um, vapor that I will try to create also alrighty so now I can show you how I start painting on my table over here, I've prepared some watercolors. Oh, okay, great, you can see it now. The brushes I'm using are usually not coming from the art store. They come from the hardware store and they are uh, cheap and very rough. Some, some of them are not very good even to paint in the wall because they create all of this lines when you paint. But I love these brushes and uh, they allow me to create different textures as well. So I'll show you how uh, I would mix some paint. And actually, by the way, I am using uh, not a normal water for these paintings. And the water that uh, I use, I generate myself. One second. Over here. So, using the electrolysis, when I would put two rods in paper and let uh, them they run electricity through the water, which is electrolysis process, separating uh, water into two gases, hydrogen and oxygen, that I am uh, concentrating the amount of the heavy water. And basically, by doing that, I uh, increase the level of the heavy water and the high level of heavy water is the level that is found on the comet and i'm keeping using this water in order to to paint my paintings with basically similar water from the comet so this is the only water that i'm going to be using i'm going to take it with me you can read more detailed descriptions of my uh, experimentations and my researches on my blog uh, on the website ekaterina-smirnova.com. And let me take. So, well, um, I also not only mix my paint, I sometimes use uh, uh, watercolor from Winsor & Newton and you know, maybe tomorrow I'll show you how I mix my my paint, but today I'm gonna just squeeze some from the tube. This, this is uh, paint gray. 
watercolor. And I'll use also, in this case, it's jet uh, black. And simply, you know, mix two colors together. And I should really decide on what I'm going to do. So, well, uh, for today, um, I'm going to add the dark areas of the darkest, you know, shadow parts of the um, my reference. Depending how much water you're mixing in, um, the intensity of the color will also be different. So, at the moment, I have very light, so I can show. This is quite transparent. When it's going to dry, it's going to look even lighter than this. And I don't, you know, color very, very um, exactly, very, very solidly. Yes, I am encouraging all different kind of textures on my painting, and I use uh, the possible textures that I can get working with watercolor. Later on, I'm going to have to add more color to make it more opaque for this part of the painting. I don't mind dripping either, as you can see. I don't precisely follow the guidelines. And I let painting to uh, form and uh, change during the creative process. Okay. So the next step is I need to wait for it to dry. And maybe while this is drying, I can work on the other area over there. Show you. If I want to make my uh, paint go more like smoother and equal, I can use a spray too. This is the area of uh, paper on which I'm going to work. And you can see that it's much more smoother. It's not as rough as here. Here is a, a dry paper, but here is a wet. Maybe it would be nice to take a bigger brush actually for this part. But it's okay. Okay. 
can't reach there anymore. I have to use a letter. That part of the formation is going to be in the shadow. That's why it's very dark. So uh, my next step is going to be, uh, I would need to use paper in order to block out the areas that I want to remain white until the very end. It's also called masking. And uh, I just use scraps of the paper, for example, something like this. And so you can see on the other side, I already have it painted on like this. This is a wrapping for the uh, roll of paper that I used before. So, you know, I like to recycle paper and uh, uh, I would keep this clean area touching the paper because if I would do the opposite, then the color may transfer actually. And uh, the tapes that I'm using is a masking tapes. Uh, they're actually artist tapes. That means that they are acid free and no acid will be transferred into my painting. So well, at this moment, I can show you that, for example, I would block some parts of the painting, maybe little areas like that, something smaller and take it with um, so, well, uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, start video, visiting my studio tomorrow at two o'clock. I'll try to start precisely in time. I will continue and you'll see how the painting has been advanced over the day. Thank you very much for watching. Visit ekaterina-smirnova.com.